these books genuinely make me want to throw them across the room, burn them, burn my house down and just start over because these books were bad. Hi and welcome back to my booktube channel, my name is Sam and today I'm going to be talking to you about some of my favourite books of 2022 and some of the worst books I have ever read. In, not just in 2022 but ever but we'll get into that because that's going to get me a lot of hate so I think we'll start with that so basically if you've not seen my 2021 video this is a very similar setup I have my Snoopy hoodie um I tried to recreate it a little bit um we got my tree in the corner obviously my bookshelves and my book trolley have changed significantly but we don't talk about that like that book trolley is so full I have no clue where I'm going to put my Christmas books. Like, I've got a few books from friends and family. I've got no space left on that. I don't know where they're going to go. Um, but yeah, let's get into the video. So if you haven't seen my 2021 uh, best books of the year versus the trash, I think that's what I, I called it. Um, basically, I went from the lowest books to the high books. So I started with my worst books and I went from the least worst to the most worst. And then I went from my least favourite to my favourite book. So we're going to do that again. We're not doing any honourable mentions this time because I just want to get this video, want to get this video nice and snappy. I don't want to ramble too much, which I'm already doing. Um, but yeah, leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll get straight into the video. Okay, so to kick us off with my most favourite, least favourite book, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, that is Leave the World Behind by Ruman Alman. Now, I don't have much to say about this book. It's basically kind of like an end, end of the world book, but doesn't really delve into that concept. It's more of a, like a supernatural, like weird, messy kind of book. It doesn't really stick with its own premise. And uh, reading this was like torture. Like the writing was so weird and like there was a lot of weird strange choices i put some examples in my instagram review if you want to check out my instagram review there's my instagram um but yeah there was a lot of weird language choice in this one a lot of description that didn't need to be in there um and overall i just don't remember much about this book it was not that memorable um i was just kind of let down because i it had been sold as this kind of like end of the world this family unit of like a mother father son and i think daughter um, or in this guest house that they've rented and then the owners come back and then they kind of have to all be together and figure out what's going on. Um, and I kind of like the overlooming sense of we never really know what, what ended the world. We just saw the breakdown of society. I like that. I just didn't like the way it was done. Um, if that makes sense. I like the concept, but I didn't like how it was portrayed in this. And I, I just think it was a complete waste of potential. And I do think this book could have benefited from being longer as well because it's only like 200 pages um or 250 pages I'm not 100% sure it's one of those those thin hardbacks where you can't really tell the page count um but also I'm going to be unholing this one for obviously it's on this list um but it has such beautiful spines like look at that spine art it's so beautiful and it's signed I don't, I don't want to get rid of it because it's so pretty, but I, I didn't like the book at all. So why would I keep it? Um, so yeah, that is number five on my worst books of 2020 list. It I think I rated it two stars, so it's not the worst of the worst, but it just wasn't what it should have been. So following that is my fourth worst favourite book of the thing. I don't know why I had to say that, um, but that is going to be One of Us is Lying by Karen McManus. Now, this one is very popular and it spawned a lot of sequels and follow-on books by the author because of the popularity on things such as TikTok. I was kind of drawn into that hype because there was a new TV series of this on Netflix and I was like, oh, I want to read the book before I watch the series. So, um, I read the book. <laughs> I didn't like it. It was kind of predictable and just sloppy in construction. Like, the, the, this is a spoiler, so just, like, double tap quickly. But, like, the one guy who's, like, a horrible person is the murderer. And it's like, oh, wow, what, what a surprise. Um, yeah, that was, that's the spoiler. Um, but, yeah, it was just disappointing. I think I gave it two stars as well as the other one. I don't have much to say. It was just kind of boring and just I, I had so much expectations for this because of the hype and it was like a oh it's a mystery who did it and I was like oh it was that guy okay okay 
Um, so yeah, I don't have much more to say about this one. It was just kind of disappointing. Um, so yeah. I don't know if I read her other books. I think I might do, like, no, I won't send that. I think I might do a video reading her other books to see if they get better, but we'll see how that goes in the new year. Um, but yeah, that is my fourth worst book of 2020. The third worst book that I read this year. And um, we're getting into the top three now, so these are going to be one star reviews. I wish I could rate them lower, but like, you kind of have to just stick with one star, but yeah. Um, the next one is No One Is Talking About This by Patricia Lockwood. Now, this book, to sum it up, this book could have been two pages short story. Like, this has nothing to it. This is, like, it's already short, but, like, the amount of content that's actually interesting to read about is about this much of the book like a few pages it's it was such a hard book to get through because it was the constant repetitive message that was consistently the same message of internet bad people on the internet are weird and strange and it's corrupting society like yes okay patricia what are you going to add to that because we already know this we already know people on the internet are not the greatest people are you going to add anything else to this dialogue? Because this book was a complete waste of time. There was some really, again, some really weird writing choices in this one. Um, there's a specific one that I'm talking about, uh, thinking about, um, to do with uh, a reference to colonialism that was really weird. Um, I think that's also in my Instagram review. I think I quoted that in my Instagram review, so check out my Instagram. Just plug in the Instagram constantly, but I do review a lot of books, so. Um, but I, I, I wouldn't know where to look for it because it's been a while since I looked at this book. But yeah, it was just really bad. Um, the, the like 90% of the book was that internet bad kind of discussion, discussion. Um, and then we had like a few pages dotted in and out, which were a story about this child with this really rare disease, which was like, oh my God, this is so interesting. I want to know more about this child. But we kept getting pulled out of that interesting storyline to be told the internet is bad like it was just a complete waste of time i highly recommend staying away from this book it's such a pointless book i i hate to say it but it's completely pointless but yeah you don't need to read this it's completely it's, it's just bad it's just bad and that's why it's the third on my worst books of 2020 Two list. I keep forgetting to say the two. Okay, so we're on my top two, well, my bottom two books of the year. Like, these are the books that I despise. They are both one-star reviews, and they are both extremely popular books. And, like, I'm not just doing this, but, like, oh, I'm not like other readers. I hate these popular books. These books genuinely made me want to throw them across the room, burn them, burn my house down and just start over because these books were bad. These books were so bad and I hated every second of them. Um, yeah, but this is going to give me a lot of hate. These are some of the most popular books on TikTok and BookTok and Instagram Reels. They're on the most popular books on the internet at this moment in time and I honestly... I'm scared for society because these books should not be so popular. But anyway, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna pull the plaster off. The second book that I hated the most in 2022 was It Ends With Us by Colleen Hoover. Now, please don't click off. Please don't click off. I won't get into too much discussion of this because it's so widely like loved and I feel like it has really cult following I feel if you criticize this book you will just get attacked um so that's why I didn't do an Instagram review for it and I don't really want to go too much into it here because I don't want to be the most hated person on the internet this book is basically the consolidation of everything wrong with book talk and its recommendations I mean there are like slithers of good recommendations which I'll get onto soon but most of the books on TikTok are not the greatest but they get so much hype for no reason i hate i'm sorry to say that but it's true and this book is the encapsulation sex this book is terrible the writing is accessible i do i do agree with the argument that this writing is accessible it's open to a wide range of readers um and anyone can really pick it up and i guess read it and enjoy it um but that doesn't make it any better like i found the writing so 
cringy and the amount of like coincidence in this book like oh as soon as you open your sh flower shop the first person that walks in wants a job and is the sister of the guy you met before like and she's also rich and is willing to work for no money like what like the coincidence and the the love interest in this one are both terrible i mean one more than the other um but yeah i just don't think this is a great representation of domestic abuse i don't think this is a great book that young people should be reading mostly because of the reaction to colleen hoover's books like a lot of her fans romanticize the characters in these not necessarily this book romanticizes domestic abuse but the community behind these books is constantly like oh i would love for an atlas i would love for a ride i want a man that does this to me and it's just it's really concerning really um like you can't go like three scrolls without seeing someone on instagram going oh colleen hoover writes the most interesting men i want a colleen hoover man and it's just it's concerning and this book is the only colleen hoover book i'm ever gonna read and as soon as this video is done, I'm probably going to bin it. <laughs> no, I'm going to bin it yet. But yeah, I hate this book. The writing was terrible. The plot convenience was astonishingly bad. The characters were two dimensional and the end message was questionable. So yeah, you probably all clicked off the video by now. But if you're still here, hi, I hope you hate this book as much as me or you're more forgiving than people that clicked off. Um, I wonder if you will be for this next book. Okay, so the next book is also an extremely popular book. And it's not... I don't know. I'm questioning my ranking now. Maybe this should have gone below the other one. But my number one most hated book of 2022 was Akatar by Sarah J Maas, A Court of Thorns and Roses. Now, I have a whole video on this one. It's literally the video before this one. So if you're really interested in hearing my rant about this i literally went off like 20 minutes talking about the stupidity of this book so if you're interested in that check out my previous video it's one of my favorite videos and it's also one uh, literally the most popular video on my channel which i'm really shocked at how well it did like i i thank you if you watched that and liked it and commented because that was an amazing video um but yeah i have a whole video on this so i won't talk too much about it but yeah i just didn't like this book I could see maybe why people would like it. It's very simplistic. <laughs> it's horrible. It's very digestible. Like Colleen Hoover, so I think this book is very digestible. It doesn't really handle too many dark themes besides the two abusive love interests that are portrayed as good. I mean, in that way, this romanticizes abuse more than Colleen Hoover does. This book is just not the best. And I won't go too much into it because I have a video about it. So check, check that out. I'll leave a link in it link for it at the end of the video um but this is my number one most hated book in 2022 i gave it one star i have a whole video about it so yeah i'm not gonna say it much more and i've said that like three times now so i'm just gonna move on so yeah Le worst book second worst book these two are gonna get me the most hate third worst fourth worst and fifth worst so yeah let's move on to some good books and i can actually appreciate some literature finally rather than ranting okay okay so let's get into some good books now so my we're gonna go again from my least most favorite book of 2022 to my favorite book of 2022 um, and I'm going to start this off straight away with Vicious by V. Schwab, which I'm very surprised is at this position in my list, because if you watch my 2021 video, there was another V. Schwab, and that was in the same position, but for the worst books. It was my fifth fav uh, fifth worst book of the year, um, and that was Invisible Life of Valley Lou, because I just found that book really disappointing. If you want to hear more thoughts, go check that <laughs> 2021 video out. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy that she's kind of boosted onto the opposite spectrum of this list. And Vicious is just a really good book. It follows um, a really interesting kind of found family dynamic, which I love. The found family in this is so amazing. I, uh, I love it so much. 
And the characters in this one, I love the morally grey characters. Give me more morally grey characters like this. Like, oh my god, they were so good. I really enjoyed them. Um, but yeah, V. Schwab, it seems, is very much a hit or miss author with me. I either love her books or I just like, this wasn't, this wasn't great. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to read more of V. Schwab. I have read Vengeful, which I also really enjoyed, but this one was definitely better. Um, but I'm excited to see if she moves up any further in my list in 2023, which is so close. The, it's currently 20, uh, the 23rd of December right now, so happy Christmas Eve. I don't know when I'm going to post this, but I hope you had a great Christmas. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see if she moves up in 2023. Um, that's all I have to say for this book. It was really good. Highly recommend it. I won't say too much about it, except that it is a morally grey badass hunting down a villainous best friend hmm. and there is a found family and a dog so check this out <laughs> so the next book on this list for my fourth favorite book of 2022 is one that i highly highly recommend it was one that i was not expecting to love as much as i do but it was a recommendation by christine from the roomies digest when we were doing the pride a which if you didn't see, it was really fun. It was like a bingo board. It was one of my favourite things of 2022. But she, I was kind of like, oh, I need a sapphic uh, sci-fi romance. And she was like, oh, read The Space Between Worlds by McKay Johnson. And I read it. And it was really, really, really good. And like, look at that cover alone. That cover is so cool. And again, <laughs> I'm so sorry. But my Instagram photos, I'm so proud of them. They were so fun to make. And... I just, I just really love those photos. Um, but this book was amazing. This book follows a kind of exploration of the multiverse. This book uh, follows our main character who basically in the multiverse you can only travel to other worlds that your counterpart has died in. Um, and our main character is dead in all but eight of these 380 realities that they have access to. And we kind of have to find out why she keeps dying and what is happening. And it's really, 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 really fun. It's, um, like I've already mentioned, it's sapphic, which makes it even better because we get a bit of representation in there. And it is one of the best sci-fis I've read. I guess that's not really much saying because I don't really read sci-fi that much. But of the ones I have read, this is my favourite one. Um, so thank you, Christine, for this recommendation. It was so much, so, so good. And I highly recommend it to anyone that has not read it yet. Um, but yeah, that's Space Between Worlds. Uh, fourth on the list. It, it probably should be higher, but some of the other ones are like closer to my heart. So it should be higher, but it's not. Now the next one is a sequel to a book that I read. Did I read it last year? I think I read it last year and it was mentioned in my other video. Um, but that was before The Coffee Gets Cold and this is the beautiful sequel. Like look at that cover. The, like the goldness on the cover is just... Um, but this is Before The Coffee Gets Cold. Tales from the Cafe, which is the sequel. Um, there's four of these books. Currently only three are out in English because it's a Japanese translated one. Um, I really, I was really excited for the third one, but my pre-order didn't come. Um, so I cancelled it. And it's only out in hardback and I really want paperback because I want it to match the first two books. So I'm waiting for the paperback to come out, um, which is really annoying because I want to read it. Um, but this book basically follows the situation of a cafe where you can travel back in time and meet people that you've lost, meet people that you never met. Um, like in terms of you, you, I don't want to say it even. Um, but you can meet people you never met, you can meet people that you lost, people that you want to get to know better. Um, it's a really interesting concept and basically you can only stay back in time for as long as your coffee is warm. So once your coffee gets warm, you have to drink it and get out of there. Otherwise you'll be trapped as a kind of spirit, kind of ghost forever, and you'll just basically die. Um, and it's such an interesting concept. I wish the books were longer because I could literally spend a whole year just reading these books. Like they are so good. Um, and this one kept up the tradition of making me cry at the end. Like, it's one of those books where you slowly build up this attachment and you're slowly like, okay, I'm not going to cry. I'm not going to cry. This is really emotional, but I'm not going to cry. And then you get to the final pages and you're just bawling. Like, you're crying your eyes out because it is so emotionally devastating. And 
it's so good i highly recommend this series um definitely check them out the first one is before the coffee gets cold and it has a blue color um i would reach it but it's like over there so yeah check this book out it's so good um oh i haven't been saying what i rated them i think i rated this five stars and five stars which i guess this is applicable to all of these books but five stars now the next book on my list is technically two books but I couldn't decide and they're both by the same author so I thought why not just have them together but my second favourite book of 2022 is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid and then here's what I mentioned earlier about good recommendations on TikTok is The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now these books, I definitely like this one a little bit more. Like this is my favourite Taylor Jenkins Reid that I've read so far. Um, but this one is so close that I just couldn't, I couldn't not mention them together because they are so good. I love Taylor Jenkins Reid things. Um, I've annotated this one. I want to reread this and annotate this because I annotated this one later on. Um, after I'd read this already, but I want to go back and annotate Seven Husbands. Um, but this book, it's like so easy just to like highlight and underline and have a conversation with the characters almost. Like you're like, oh no, don't do this. No, no, idiot. Um, <laughs> I'm just reading some of my annotations. But they're really, really, really good books. And now this one was a buddy read with like a T, uh, we have a Taylor Jenkins read club on Instagram with my read and Summer, uh, who I'll either put here or i'll leave in the description they're both really lovely people so definitely check them out on instagram um but we re read this together and we had such a fun time discussing this book it was definitely added a level of enjoyment to this book but basically malibu rising it's about four siblings the reavers who you might know from mick reaver from here he is the father of them um and we definitely learn how much of like an asshole he is in this book he is so so bad i hate him with my entire soul but yeah we follow his children in this one as they kind of prepare a party for all these celebrities because they are like models and uh swimmers what was the surfers is are they just called surfers um famous surfers and swimmers and they're setting up this famous party that they have every year with all these celebrities and it gets wilder and wilder every year and the drama in this book is perfect like the celebrity drama is so fun um i loved all four siblings my favorite was probably nina just because she's like our main one and i really loved her but i also like kit but yeah i really love this book so much and i highly recommend it it's definitely a hard hitter with the flashbacks that we get throughout the book following them as children with their mother and father and it's really sad and it's really sad and the seven husbands of evelyn hugo is about celebrity talking about her seven husbands and there's maybe something more to those seven husbands but this is really good as well and it's full of drama and hollywood shenanigans and it's so good they are both amazing books highly recommend it and this is actually a good tiktok recommendation if you see this on your tiktok pick it up this is a good one compared to the other ones i've talked about in this video but yeah i, I kind of just rambled there but these books are my second favorite if you count them as one or we'll just use this one it's my second favorite book of 2022 my favorite book of 2022 is probably one that not a lot of people have heard of or have heard of but not read because it's quite a big chunky book that i've not seen anyone talk about um but that is battle royale by koshin takami now this is basically you might know it by the drama it was in basically um, Suzanne Collins, the author of The Hunger Games, was accused of copying the idea for The Hunger Games off of this book, which also follows a class of Japanese students who are forced to fight to the death on an island by the government. Now, saying it that broadly does make them sound very similar, like The Hunger Games, a bunch of kids being forced to kill each other for the capital, the government. Um, but like besides that, they're completely different books. So like I know I'm maybe biased because I adore the Hunger Games, but I also adore this book. So I love them both, and having read them both, I do think they are very different entities. Like this one is so much more graphic than the Hunger Games. I mean, 
there's literally children murdering each other and this one somehow manages to be more disturbing and gory and amazing. Um, not that, like, kids killing each other is amazing, but, like, the way it's written. Um, now we have, as we actually have more, like, content in this one because The Hunger Games is kind of like half the book is The Hunger Games, whereas this is the entire Hunger Games. It's this 600 page book and it is glorious. I love it so much from start to finish. I was hooked. I was on the edge of my seat. I needed to know what was happening, who was betraying who, who was lying, who was telling the truth, who was gonna die, who was gonna survive. It was a roller coaster and it had me on the edge of my seat. It was such a good book. It was amazing. Um, we see loads of different perspectives in this one. Obviously we have our main character but we also get uh, vignettes of other characters and how they die or how they affect our main characters which I thought was really clever and yeah and there's like a countdown on each chapter it's like oh 42 students remain 30 students remain 32 students remain like it's really okay my neighbor's watching me okay okay um but <laughs> um but that countdown at the end of every chapter was like oh my god this is so like intense because you'd I'd flick to the next app to put my bookmark in it and I'd see like oh there's only ten students left now when there was eight uh, when there was eighteen before it was like who's what's gonna happen what what happens to eight of the people um so yeah really love this book and as I was saying I think the Hunger Games and this are completely different entities they have a similar base premise but as a whole they are completely different books. And I, unless she's publicly stated that, yeah, this was an inspiration, which I haven't seen, I do think it's a bit unfair to say they are plagiarised off each other when they are completely different. Like, The Hunger Games takes its story to a whole nother level that this, this one doesn't quite go into. Um, and this one goes into things that The Hunger Games doesn't exactly go into. So, yeah, I think they're completely different. You can definitely read both and really enjoy them, like I did. Um, but my favourite book of 2022 was Battle Royale and I highly recommend this book. It does not have enough praise, well, have enough attention on the internet. I've literally never seen anyone else review this. Maybe I'm just not following the right people. Like, where are my Battle Royale people at? Because this book is amazing. I like it so much. Um, the only thing I would say is it does get a bit slow in chapters. We get chapters of sometimes of just people sat in the woods talking which can be a bit slow, but I think they're worth reading to get that kind of depth into the characters and to really build those bonds that we will then see collapse, made stronger, betrayal. It's so good. I highly recommend this one if you haven't already. That's my favourite book of 2022. We also have these ones, which are in second place. Oh God, I put them in the wrong order. Um, This one, <laughs> the third place, fourth place, oh God. I always drop books in these videos, like Jesus. Uh, and then fifth favourite. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's the video. Okay. So I've now shown you my favourite books. The worst books. I hope you watched all the way through this and you didn't click off when I slandered Colleen Hoover and Sarah J Mass, who are like extremely popular. I'm so sorry about that, but I had to tell the truth. They were the worst books I've read this year. They were terrible. Um but all for you if you enjoyed them. Like, so that is what reading is. Reading is so subjective. If you enjoy a book and someone else doesn't, that doesn't make the book any less worthy of being read. Yeah. So, just because I hate it doesn't mean you can't love it. That's what I'm getting at. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more from me. This is probably going to be my last video of 2022. I don't think I'm going to be able to film another one. Um, but yeah, I, I really enjoyed this year. I think I was a lot better at being consistent. I posted at least one video for each month, even if it wasn't necessarily a video a month. Um, and I filmed some really good videos this year as well. I think my New York vlog was my favourite one because I got to go to flip in New York, um, which was amazing. But yeah, it was such a great year. I've met so many great people on Instagram. Check out my Instagram. Um, and follow the people I'm following because literally all of them are the sweetest people ever. So they're really, it's a really fun community to be in. 
and I just want to thank you for watching my videos, thank you for subscribing, for liking, for commenting, whatever, on my videos, and I'll hope to see you in 2023 with a new video. So yeah, bye!